on the appearance of Christ to his apostles on the day of his ascension, by the Venerable Father Louis de Pont, S.J. First point. The day being come in which Christ our Lord had decreed to ascend to heaven as he had loved his which were in the world, so in the end he gave them greater signs and arguments of his love, and to this end he appeared that day to his disciples in the supping chamber as they were eating, and also ate with them amiably with great signs and tokens of love, and then said to them, that day he was to depart to his father, and it may be believed that to comfort them in the sorrow which this news caused them, he repeated some of those reasons which before he had delivered them in the sermon he made after supper. First he said to them, I go to prepare you a place, and if I shall go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you also may be. As if he had said, I ascend to heaven to open the gates, and to give entrance to such just persons as have deserved the same, to the end that they may enjoy the mansions which are prepared for them in the house of my father. Rejoice ye, for I will come again to fetch you in the hour of your death, and will lead you with me, placing you in that place which my Father has designed. Colloquy O oh, my beloved, ascend in good time up to heaven, since it is thine and was principally created for thee. But forget not to return for me, that I also may come where thou art assisting me with thy grace to the end I may be worthy to be admitted into thy glory. Amen. Then immediately he added another reason, saying, If you loved me, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. That is to say, if you love me, you ought to rejoice at my honour and my contentment, because I ascend to my Father which is in heaven, who is greater than I, as I am man, and is to honour and glorify me, setting me upon his right hand, where I shall enjoy with quiet that eternal kingdom which I have conquered by my passion. Colloquy I rejoice, O most sweet Jesus, that thou ascendest to thy Father, because I love thee more than myself, and desire thine honour more than mine own. And since thy Father is also mine, I have great hope that thou wilt hereafter bring me to enjoy his divine presence. Thirdly, he further added, it is expedient to you that I go. For if I go not, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. As if he had said, It does not only affect my honour that I ascend to heaven, but also your profit, to the end your faith may be perfected, your hope erected, your charity purified, and that the plenitude of the Holy Ghost may come down from heaven, for if I ascend not, the Holy Ghost will not come to you. As well because it is decreed that I ascend first and send him from thence to you, as also for that yourselves are not well prepared to receive him, because you adhere with a certain kind of carnal love to my corporal presence, which manner of love it is necessary for you to cast off, that you may be capable to receive so sovereign a gift. Wherefore, O my soul, consider attentively that thy God is a spirit, and that he will be loved with a spiritual love, quite exempt from all savour of self-love, for if to love the corporal presence of Christ with a love less pure and with some self-interest hinder the coming of the Holy Ghost, how much more will the inordinate love of thyself or of any other creature hinder the same? Colloquy O sweet Saviour, 
Govern my soul as seems best to thee, and if it be expedient for her spiritual profit that thou absent thyself from her and withdraw all sensible consolation, thy will be done. For I know for certain that thou wilt send the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, in due season, with that plenitude that is requisite for her to persevere in thy love. Second point. After that Christ our Lord had comforted his disciples, he said to them, Stay you in the city till you be endued with power from on high in which words he promises to them the coming of the Holy Ghost, but in a manner very mysterious, as will appear, pondering each word apart by itself. First, therefore, he says to them, Sedete, sit here, or tarry, that is to say, be quiet, to teach them that the quietude of the body and of the soul with the calmness and stillness of the heart is of great importance to receive this celestial gift. Moreover, to admonish them that they should expect with patience and longanimity without hastening more than was expedient, referring the care hereof to Almighty God. And for this cause he would not assign a certain day wherein he intended to send the Holy Ghost, that so they might daily expect him, daily ask him, and daily prepare themselves to receive him, but only said to them that they should be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence to the end that they should take comfort hereby that the delay of his coming should not be long. Hence I will learn to expect with quietness and patience the coming of the Divine Spirit with that plenitude which I desire, referring the day of his coming to the Divine Providence according to that of Isaiah, saying, He that believeth, let him not hasten. Secondly, he said to them that they should tarry in the city that is of Jerusalem. And although it might have seemed more to the purpose that they should have gone to the desert or else to some mountain, separate and apart, there to expect with quietness the coming of the Holy Ghost, yet he willed that they should expect the same in the city as in a place frequented by many people because the Holy Ghost was not sent for them alone, but for the good of all men, and therefore it was desirable he should be given in a public place, from whence they might presently issue forth to preach the law of Jesus Christ, conformably to the saying of the prophet Isaiah, The law shall come forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Moreover, God our Lord much more esteems the solitude of the heart than the solitude of the body, and to show that in the midst of the noise of the people there may be had a heart quiet, peaceable, and apt to see and receive God. And it may be for this cause, not without mystery, this city, though very populous, was called Jerusalem, as much as to say, Vision of Peace. Colloquy O Prince of Peace, pacify my heart, and quiet my spirit, that in all places and times I may pray to thee, lifting up pure hands to heaven, expecting the gift which thou hast promised me. Amen. Thirdly, he willed them that they should tarry in the city, adding, Till you be endued with power from on high, that is to say, with the power of the Holy Ghost, by which he gave them to understand that of themselves they were naked and disarmed, feeble, weak, and void of that spirit and power which was needful to go into the world to preach the gospel and that, therefore, 
they were to stay until the Holy Ghost should come on them, who should clothe them with his grace, arm them with his gifts, and fortify them with his celestial virtues, giving them force, virtue, and power for this mission. And this virtue, as the Lord says, comes from on high, because it is most high and far surpassing all human power, so also for that every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, descending from the Father of lights, whose dwelling and habitation is on high. Hence I will draw two admonitions. The first, that it is of great importance to ground myself in true humility, confessing my nakedness and my weakness, for of myself neither have I garments nor sufficient weapons, nor can clothe myself with them unless some others clothe me like a child. And for this cause Christ our Lord said not, Tarry until you endue or clothe yourselves, but until you be endued. The second admonition is that it is a rash presumption to issue forth to these weighty expeditions before we have the means, and be endued with power from on high, for he that goes forth to fight without weapons against strong enemies will be easily vanquished by them. Colloquy O Father of lights, from whom all good and celestial gifts descend, behold how poor I am in thy presence, and so little a child, that I neither have garments in which to clothe me, nor yet can clothe myself, unless thy mercy perform both the one and the other in my behalf. Clothe me, Lord, with virtue from on high, by which I may take in hand such commissions as concern thy service, and permit not that without such virtue I rashly expose myself to that I am not able to perform. For if I seek to fly without wings, instead of ascending on high, pride will cast me down into the profoundest depths. Christ our Lord, in saying to them that they should tarry in the city till they were endued with power from on high, gave them to understand that as soon as they had received this power, they were to issue forth upon his business. For as it had been rashness to have gone forth before they had received this power, so should it be pusillanimity not to issue forth, having received the same. The apostles, therefore, presently issued forth, as will be seen in the next meditation. Third point. He led them out as far as Bethania, to the mount that is called Olivet. Christ, our Lord, commanded all his disciples who were in that feast chamber that they should presently go to Bethany, to the Mount of Olivet, for that from thence he would ascend to heaven. It is not certain that he himself brought them forth and accompanied them for some time, suffering himself to be seen of them and not of other men who passed by the way or whether he vanished from them and the disciples went alone. However, they presently obeyed the commandment of Christ our Lord, and it may be believed that at their going from the feast chamber, they called to mind that former going forth to the garden of Gethsemane, which was seated upon the one side of the Mount of Olivet, full of sorrow and anxiety, trembling for fear of the troubles which they foresaw would befall them by the death of their beloved master. But now they go forth with great anxiety, mingled with sadness and joy, expecting this glorious ascending up to heaven. And with this fervor they walk speedily to the place which was assigned them. Christ chose the mountain of Olivet whence to ascend to heaven, 
on which he had prayed to his father with great agony and with a bloody sweat, on which he was forsaken of his disciples, delivered by Judas to his enemies, taken of the Jews, bound with cords and trampled under their feet, and finally, from whence he issued forth to suffer the ignominies of the cross, he would ascend to enjoy the greatness of his glory, that so we may understand that by such travails he gained heaven, which he went to possess, and that if I have patience, which was the beginning of my humiliation, shall likewise be the beginning of my exaltation, and that from these temporal labors I shall ascend to everlasting repose. Moreover, Christ therefore designed for the place of his ascension Bethania, which is interpreted house of obedience, and the Mount of Olivet, which signifies the top of mercy and of charity, to signify to us that all things, whatever he did, from his incarnation to his ascension up to heaven, were done to obey his Father with most perfect obedience, in whose house of obedience he so lived, that he never departed from the same. All these things likewise which he did, he directed to that supreme and high end of charity and mercy, for the good of men, for their love, and to deliver them from their miseries. And the way to ascend to heaven is from Bethany and the Mount of Olives, that is, by the house of obedience and heights of charity and mercy, purifying, as St. Peter says, our souls in the obedience of charity. Colloquy O only begotten Son of the Father, who by the ways of obedience and charity ascendest to sit upon his right hand, assist me, I beseech thee, that during my whole life I may dwell in the house of obedience, never departing in the least point from thy holy will, endeavouring always to ascend to the highest degree of charity and mercy, till I come to arrive with thee to the highest of thy glory, where I shall see thee and enjoy thee for all eternity. Amen.